makers, I'm Joe, the 3D Maker Noob, and today we're going to talk about the Felix Tech 4. For those of you unaware, Felix Printers is a Dutch company which has been producing 3D printers for quite some time and has quite uh, a nice lineup in their series of printers. This one in particular is the recently released Tech 4. So a bit of a backstory. About a year ago, I uh, reached out to uh, Felix Printers and I asked them if they would allow me to review the Tech Series 3D printer. Now the Tech Series is the style of 3D printer by Felix Printers, which is constantly being upgraded. And once they do certain changes, they do issue a package for sale in order to upgrade it. First it was the Tech 3, then the Tech 3.1, I'm not sure if there was a Tech 3.2, but this is the Tech 4. So whoever had the Tech 3 could easily upgrade to the Tech 4. So when I reached out to them, they were very willing to send me a unit. However, they told me to wait a little bit because they were about to release the Tech 4. Now, there were a few delays along the way. However, it's finally here and I get to talk to you guys about it. Now, this won't be a full review uh, because I only had about a week and a half to two weeks to play with it. And it's more like going to be initial thoughts and introduction to the printer. And I'll explain why in a bit. But first, let's talk a bit about specifications. So the Tech 4 boasts a print volume of 255 millimeters on the X axis, 205 millimeter on the Y axis, and 225 millimeters on the Z axis. However, if you opt to get the dual head system, the 255 millimeters on the X axis will be reduced to 240. You can purchase it as a kit or fully assembled for those interested in the kit. The frame is composed of 4040 and 4080 extruded aluminum, making it extremely solid. The printer has very, very few 3D printed parts, mostly the fan ducts and some other accessories, which are not exactly mechanical. Everything else is injection molded. It has high wind linear rails on all three axes and the Z axis is also controlled by a, um, a single lead screw. It also comes with an inductive sensor for assisted bed leveling. It also has a removable flexible build plate with PEI. The build plate is made out of corrugated aluminum, at least that's what it looks like, making it extremely light. It uses a direct extruder setup. Um, as I mentioned, it could be a single head or a dual head and comes as standard with a 0.35 millimeter nozzle and a full metal hot end. And it comes with a 12 volt, 15 amp meanwhile power supply. So the assembly of this printer was quite a lot of fun, I have to say. It was interesting to build a printer that's very, very different from what I'm used to building um, on this channel. It is much more solid than I actually thought it would be because I thought there would be a lot of weight on the bed. But the parts along with the uh, with the linear rails and the locking mechanism, it actually is extremely solid. So I was very impressed with that. Now, once the printer was built, it was time to level the bed. And I have to say that it has an extremely, extremely easy uh, wizard, which comes pre-installed in order to assist you to do the bed leveling. It comes with scrollies on the front and the back, which tell you exactly how many degrees each scroll wheel uh, should be turned in which direction in order to make sure the bed is completely level. Now, I'm going to be honest, I did have two minor issues um, when I assembled this printer. Nothing major, but it's very important for me to mention them. One of them was that this is a single head um, uh, extruder printer. So the pre-installed firmware was that of a dual head extruder. So that was easy because all I had to do was simply um, plug the printer by via USB and run a hex file. There is no software to install. You just open this hex file and it automatically installs itself on the printer, which makes it extremely easy. The next little issue I had was that one of the wires for the stepper motors was faulty and therefore the Y axis wasn't working. Um, all I need to do there was simply replace the wire and everything was good to go. Up to this point, I need to point out that the Felix printer support was actually very helpful because they instantly offered to replace the wire and send me a new one. I opted not to because strictly speaking, I have a lot of those, so no harm, no foul. So once those things were out of the way, I decided to print something. And the first thing I did was slice my new, let's call it the new Benchy of 2018, which is a steamboat model found on Thingiverse. And I threw in some printer pro PLA 
and decided to print with the stock settings which are supplied with the uh, factory file of Simplify 3D for the Felix Tech 4. Now the first model I printed right here, the fact that I did not tune anything at all on this printer. I just threw in the filament, I set the temperatures and it started printing. Obviously I cannot base it on just one print, there's more testing to be done, but this came out great. The only issue that I could see, or two minor issues I could see, there was quite a bit of stringing. And the other issue that I saw was the fact that it showed a lot of echoing, which uh, led me to believe that the acceleration and jerk settings uh, could possibly a bit too high for it. So just to counteract that, I decided to print another one. And this time what I did is I reduced the speed down to 40 millimeters a second. Once I reduced the speed, I have to say that the echoing went down quite a bit from the stock 60 millimeters a second, which kind of confirmed that, yeah, it's definitely the acceleration and jerk settings that possibly need to be lowered down a bit. So it's no major issue, but definitely something um, Felix printers should definitely look into. Other than that, the retraction settings still stood there. However, once again, those are minute settings which I have to adjust according to the filament that I'm using. Once those two prints were done, I decided to do the 2017 Make Test for 3D printers. And these are the parts here. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to be printing these for every review uh, of 3D printer because it's always good to have a bit of a benchmark. So to start off the overhangs, the overhangs printed extremely well up to 45 degrees, 60 degrees, a bit of sag, nothing major. It still printed fine till 70 degrees. However, obviously not the highest of quality when it comes to the overhangs. And that could be attributed to the fact that the fan duct that comes stock has quite a large opening. So I think it kind of dissipates the air um, in many directions rather than focusing it just underneath the nozzle. Next is the surface quality test, which looks at the flat surface finish, a dome shaped curved, um, finish and also a sloped one. And this gets pretty much very, well, almost full marks. The only issue that I can see is once again, the retractions um, and coasting possibly settings. Definitely did a, gr a brilliant job. You then have this test here, which looks at echoing. And once again, you can see that the echoing is visible. This was printed at about 45 millimeters a second. So yeah. Not too bad, but could be better. Bridging was also quite decent. It did all the lengths quite nicely, so extremely happy with the result. This little mushroom right here uh, looks at support and how it is easily removed and how the surface quality looks um, within the support. Now I have to say the supports came out extremely easy off this and the surface quality is actually not bad at all. But once again, that those are things that could be attributed to also the settings of the slicer itself. Now I know that Simplify 3D has very good support settings, so that could be attributed to that as well. But other than that, it printed beautifully. You then have the dimensions tower, uh, which looks at um, fine calibration. And it was possibly off by 0 0.15 or 0 0.1 millimeters um, in each direction. It could be attributed to the extrusion multiplier, but it did exceptionally well. And anything under minus, uh, anything under 0.2 um, deviation to me is actually fairly good. That also comes to the negative spacing. And this kind of looks at how easy these pegs come out once you print it. And everything up to 0 0.3 came out beautifully, very easily. 0 0.2, not so much. It's kind of stuck in there. However, looking at it from the top part, I can see that the space is there to remove the 0 0.2 but at the bottom it's not. So that could be attributed to the cooling and also the uh, retraction settings because any little blob would actually fuse this together. Then you have little makey here, which looks at detail. And I have to say that this printed absolutely beautifully. The reason why every single print has a uh, brim, because once again, those are the stock settings. So I use them as is just to see what happens out of the box but all the details came fine, overhangs, uh, bridging. So yeah, definitely four marks for that. We then have the retraction test, which looks at fine detail and also how it handles retractions. In terms of details, it actually did very well. I think once I tune in the um, filament settings and retraction settings, I think this could perform beautifully. It all, it already did very well. The retractions are just not there yet. I can see um, very, very fine stringing along all the way, 
But other than that, not bad at all. And finally, there's the Z-Wobble, which looks at sort of the, uh, the Z-axis to see if there is any play whatsoever. And I have to say that this printed beautifully, so this definitely gets full marks. So once that printed, I grabbed some of Print Pro PETG, and I printed this cloth phase right here in uh, phase mode. And I have to say that it printed absolutely beautiful. It loves PETG. The only issue that I saw is then I got Z banding. And I have to say that this is probably one of the most consistent Z banding I've ever seen, because you can see the Z, uh, the lead screw threads all over the model. So that is definitely mitigated by possibly me adjusting the lead screw uh, nut inside the, um, the Z axis support. Now this is all I have printed so far. And the reason why this is more like a first look video rather than full review is because once I found out that this can come as a dual head, I purchased the upgrade kit to have it as a dual head because I really want to see how it performs in both single and dual extruder mode because I think it is very important. So yeah, I purchased this myself through their website um, and I wanted to put this review out, well, this initial thoughts out before I install this to give you guys an idea of what the performance is like straight out of the box without any tweaking whatsoever. So what do I like about this printer so far? And the reason why I say so far is because I need to do a full review of it and I need to test a lot more things on it. But so far I'm very impressed with the build quality. Every single part of this printer just oozes high quality, starting from the high wind linear rails. I know how expensive they are, so that's definitely a plus for this printer. I really like how solid it is. The 4040 and 4080 aluminum just makes it an extremely solid frame and yeah, quite impressed. It was extremely easy to assemble, granted that their current iteration, uh, their current release of the instruction manual needs a little bit tweaking, which I will be giving them feedback about, but it did come together quite nicely and it wasn't actually, it was, it was a joy to put together. Finally, the prints, the fact that you assemble this printer and you get decent quality prints or very good quality prints with minimal hassle and no tweaking is always a plus. And they have factory files for Simplify 3D, for Cura, so you're, you're never held back in that aspect. So you can easily just download, install, and start running prints. Obviously, you have to fine tune for the filament you are using, but other than that, yeah, awesome. The cons, there are a couple of things, not major things, but important things. Um, the first one is the noise. It doesn't do a lot of noise in terms of fan, but the stepper motors do produce um, a very high pitch sound, which kind of can be annoying if you're just sitting right next to the printer while it's running. The other thing is that the heat pad actually makes kind of like a whizzing noise when it reaches the set temperature. Now, I spoke to Felix Printers about this and they have confirmed that this was attributed to the latest firmware update. Um, however, that firmware update made the temperatures of both the hot end and the heat bed much more stable. So this noise is the downside of that, but they have confirmed that they are working on it. Lastly is the price. It is not the cheapest printer you can buy at 1,100 euros. Um, that's excluding any taxes for the kit version. It's definitely one of the highest price points of kits. But as I mentioned, the quality of the parts, I know that high wind linear rails can come into the hundreds of euros um, just for a couple of them if they're genuine. So I can see from all the parts that are in this printer that yes, costs add up. However, you're also backed by a very big company with great customer support. And personally speaking, from my experience with a lot of printers, good customer support and assistance when needed is actually priceless. That is it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, at the end of the video, I will leave the time lapse of me assembling the uh, Tech 4. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I will leave links to, uh, well, everything I printed and also the Felix Tech 4 in the video description. In the meantime, if you have any questions, once again, leave them in the comment section below. Like, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making, guys.